Today we will be discussing socialism reconsidered. This is the 1944 essay by Nino Masani. Nino Masani was an Indian parliamentarian, a public intellectual, and of course, an Indian. In Socialism Reconsidered, Masani argued that there were at least four assumptions of Marxist socialism that required reconsideration. The first among these was the assumption that argued that the abolition of private property and its nationalization would automatically lead to a society with economic democracy and a classless um, and, and would lead to a classless society. Now, Masani spoke of this assumption in the context of Russia, where um, where despite Marxist socialism, uh, we weren't able to arrive at um, a classless society. Now, if we were to consider this in the Indian context, in a society where caste, ca caste class, gender-based inequalities are so deep-seated, um, to think of a society which, is, which lacks private property and has absolute nationalization, um, it's, it's very difficult for marginalized and vulnerable groups that lack political bargaining power um, to, uh, to, to achieve socio-economic mobility. The second Marxist assumption that Masani suggested we required reviewing um, assumed that the dictatorship of the proletariat was, uh, is a possible and indeed a necessary transition state to socialism. The theory was that having served its purpose, the dictatorship would evaporate and indeed, as Lenin following Engels put it, the state will then wither away. Now, Masani spoke of this assumption in the context of Russia. He said the state was far from withering away. In fact, the stranglehold of the state on individual liberties had increased. Let's look at this assumption in the context of India or let's generalize it further and think about it in the context of the incentives that get created in a society where the state is so greatly empowered. In a society where state holds um, great power to this extent, uh, there do not exist incentives to, for there to be a change in structure for the power to shift from the governing to the governed. Third assumption that Masani suggested that required reviewing um, was one that argued that Socialism um, could be achieved by appealing to the collective selflessness of the working class and its collective hatred for the property owning classes. Now, unfortunately, Masani said that this, this appeal to the collective selflessness of the working class often leads to um, them becoming then becoming party to the injustice that they were essentially arguing against. Um, now, he, he explains this in the context of uh, Britain when the collective um, working class was uh, empowered through the Labour Party and was given a small share of the profits of the empire, the Labour Party then eventually ended up becoming uh, a perpetuator of the same imperialism that it was, um, you know, that it was uh, trying to oppose. Um, now, if we were to think of this in a more um, abstract sense, um, in a society where you try to counter the flaws or gaps in, this, in the system, by becoming, um, you know, part of the system and so deeply, such a deeply seated part of the same system, um, then you end up perpetuating the gaps um, or the flaws of the system. Now, the fourth assumption um, that Masani uh, outlined before I, I jump into the fourth assumption, I must tell you that Masani himself held a socialist belief to the late late 1930s, shortly before this um, this essay was uh, written. And um, he then suggested that the fourth assumption of socialism was that it is the only alternative to um, capitalism or existing gaps in capitalism. Now, he, he, he said that this might be, a, might be an unfair assumption to say the least because there must exist a system that is better. Uh, one, and Masani in fact was among the, uh, the early proponents of a mixed economy. Now, whether or not the mixed economy that India eventually ended up having was the one Masani envisioned um, is, is, is up for debate, but uh, he was definitely um, among the first proponents of a mixed economy.